When you hear the term precious metals, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Gold, platinum, silver. I think of all those two, but there's another metal that also comes to mind, and that metal is lead. Why lead, you ask? Well, multiple reasons. Lead allows me to go fishing. It allows me to take my bait, put it in the river at a level the fish are at, and hold it at that level to catch these fish. Number two, being in the military, I am a huge supporter of Second Amendment rights. I believe that you should be able to own a weapon to defend yourself, to defend your family, to defend that pursuit of happiness that we're all in search of. We live in a world of nuclear giants and ethical babies. That's the sad truth of the world we live in today. We also live in a day and age where these ethical babies want to take our arms, want to take our precious metals. Typically, animals will have the strongest to be their leader, but we as humans, for some reason, seem to elect these ethical babies, these politicians to be our leaders that are spineless, that they are weak. In this video, I'm gonna be teaching you all how to procure raw scrap lead, take that scrap lead and process it into clean, usable lead that can be later used to make fishing sinkers, ammunitions, whatever the hell have you. If you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel yet, it'd be greatly appreciated if you did so. Making videos, catching fish, doing some basic how-tos, it's my passion, I love doing this. So thank you, I appreciate it, and let's get into this video. So in my opinion, there's five basic steps to processing lead. First, you need to find a reliable source of scrap lead. Once you've found a source of scrap lead, you're gonna take that lead and melt it. Third, you're going to remove the dross and waste from the lead. Fourth, you're gonna flux the molten lead to clean it. And lastly, you'll pour the molten lead into molds to make ingots to be used at later times. So, my reliable source of scrap lead has been used wheel weights from tire shops. Many of these tire shops will take these used wheel weights and put them in a five gallon bucket that they'll either A, give to you flat out, or B, they'll sell you at a fairly cheap price. A lot of these wheel weights were given to me because I've become friends with these managers of these tire shops over the years. Quite often I'll get a call saying, hey, come pick up a bucket of lead. So now that we talked about one possible source of scrap lead, let's go over some of the tools I use to process scrap lead into clean, usable ingots. I like to use a propane burner to heat the lead. You're going to need a large metal pot to melt the lead in. I use this 12 inch wide by six inch deep cast iron Dutch oven. It does the job quite well. You're also going to need a metal bucket for dumping the hot dross and wheel clips into. You'll need a stainless steel slotted spoon for removing wheel clips and other macros from the molten lead. I use a stainless steel serving spoon for removing the dross from the top of the lead. You'll also need a stainless steel ladle for pouring your clean lead into the molds. All three of these utensils can be picked up at Walmart on the cooking aisle. You'll need a mold to pour your lead into. They make molds specifically designed for lead pouring. However, they're not necessary. They do an amazing job. They look really good, but I like to use mini muffin tins. Mini muffin tins are readily available. You can pick them up at Walmart. They're cheap and they do an amazing job. I'm basically just looking to store my lead. I don't need it to be beautiful. I'm not really selling it. You'll also need a form of flux. I use sawdust. We'll get into what fluxing is at a later time in the video. If you can't be safe while doing something, why even do it? Because molten lead and freshly poured lead is extremely hot, you'll want to have a good pair of leather gloves. You'll also need to have a respirator that is rated for toxic fumes and dust. This is by far the most important piece of PPE you can have with you. I'm typically an extremely busy person, so I like to use a propane ditch torch to help speed up the process. I have found that by using a propane ditch torch, you can speed up the process by more than four times. If you've got one, I highly recommend you break it out and use it. Also, eye protection is a must. Get a good pair of safety glasses. Don't risk it. For your safety, do not ever add any liquid to molten lead. Water and molten lead do not mix. The result is explosive. Lead and water will go flying everywhere. I've seen it happen. It's happened in my own shed. Do not add any water to molten lead. A good practice to have is to not trust that wheel weights are dry. Sometimes there's a little bit of water in wheel weights that have been sitting for a while. I use a square mouth shovel to distance myself from the melting pot in case there is any form of liquid in the wheel weights. Don't let it blow up in your face. 
Lead is extremely dense, and as a result, many of the imperfections that can be found in wheel weights will float. The steel clips will float, any gravel, dirt, rocks, whatever have you, will float on molten lead, which is ideal for us because we need to remove these imperfections to further clean our lead. Wheel weights typically have two parts. You'll have the lead weight, and then you'll have the steel clip that is used to hold the wheel weight to the wheel. By melting these wheel weights, it will free the steel clip from the lead, which will then allow you to scrape off these imperfections to throw them away. As stated earlier, if you have a propane ditch torch, I highly recommend you use it. Why? Because it will speed up the process of melting these wheel weights many times. Once the lead is melted and molten, you'll want to use your slotted serving spoon to start removing the steel clips, any gravel, any of these imperfections that are floating on the molten lead. I will scoop all this garbage into a metal bucket right next to my melting pot. All of these steel clips are extremely hot and can start a fire really easily if you're not careful. Once all the wheel weights have been removed from the molten lead, you'll need to add a flux to help further clean the lead. I'm not a chemist, but from what I understand, fluxing is the process of when you add a substance to a molten metal during the smelting process that then combines with any impurities that are in this molten metal that will then form a slag that you can then scrape off or remove, thus further cleaning the molten metal. I will flux my lead twice just to make sure that my lead is as clean as possible. You'll want to add the sawdust and stir it throughout and then as soon as the sawdust is done burning, you'll want to scrape off all the carbon, all the ash to leave yourself with clean lead. Once your lead has a mirror-like reflection, you know you have fairly clean lead that is then ready to be poured into molds to make ingots. You can tell that your lead is too hot if it starts to turn golden, bronze, purple, blue. If your lead does start to turn these colors, no worries. Simply turn your heat down to prevent this. The last step in this process is to pour your clean lead into molds. You'll want to make sure that your molds are on level, flat ground that will not tip over. There's nothing worse than getting burned by molten lead, so make sure that your molds are flat. You'll then take your ladle and fill each mold with enough lead to bring it almost to the top. Lead will harden fairly quick, it doesn't take long. Finally, after several hours worth of work, we filled up a five gallon bucket full of lead muffins. That can now be used to make fishing sinkers or ammunitions. The hard truth that many people don't realize is that we live our everyday lives behind a feeble normality. Many of us live beneath constitutions that hang by a thread. The world you know today may not be the world of tomorrow. For now, I use my lead to help me do what I love, and that is catch fish. It is my prayer that I never have to melt my fishing sinkers to make ammunitions. However, it gives me great comfort knowing that all it would take is a little bit of heat and a slightly different mold, and I could make something that could silence any threat to myself and my family. I hope you all liked the video, and I hope you learned something from it. If you did, if you could return the favor and subscribe to my small but growing YouTube channel, it'd be greatly appreciated. If you have any tips or tricks for processing lead that you think would be beneficial to people, please drop those in the comment section and help other people learn from you. In my next video, I'm going to be taking you all through the lead pouring process on how to make lead sinkers. The sinkers that we're going to be making are these large 10 to 14 ounce pyramid sinkers that we use for white sturgeon fishing up in Idaho. Again, thank you all for watching and we will catch you all in the next episode.